when uh, the Europe 2020 strategy was launched in 2010, I think few of us would have imagined that today Europe would still be in such a situation of instability and uncertainty as a result of the economic and financial crisis. Um, problems were mentioned. I don't think we need to mention the problems because we are living the problems uh, in our daily lives and we are surrounded by, uh, by problems that are constantly being brought to our attention uh, locally and uh, on the European level. In 2009, a recovery had started, yet it has clearly faltered. According to the economic outlook published just the day before yesterday by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, the crisis in the euro area remains the key risk, not just to Europe, but to the world economy. Furthermore, according to the OECD, if the euro area sovereign debt crisis is not addressed, Recent contagion to countries thought to have relatively solid public finances could massively escalate economic disruption. OECD chief economist Pierre Carlo Padoan stated that prospects only improve if decisive action is taken quickly. Euro area growth is forecast to slow down from 1.6% this year to 0.2% next year, before picking up to 1.4% in 2013. If we look at the international situation, the United States GDP, gross domestic product, is projected to rise by 2% in 2012 and by a further 2.5% in 2013 after an exp expected expansion of 1.7% this year. Whereas in Japan, GDP is expected to expand by 2% in 2012 and 1.6% in 2013, following a contraction of 0.3% this year which reflects the impact of the earthquake and tsunami and subsequent reconstruction activity. China economic growth is estimated at 8.5% in 2012 from 9.3% this year before climbing back to 9.5% in 2013. In the strategic response section of its outlook, OECD identifies country-specific policies that need to be implemented if the macroeconomic situation goes off track. These are stabilization of the financial sector, protection of the social safety net, and further easing of monetary policy. Governments are urged to provide fiscal support while strengthening fiscal frameworks to reassure markets that, financial, that public finances can be brought under control. According to the report, a wide range of structural measures are urgently required to boost jobs and economic activity. I quote, Appropriate labor market policies are needed to deal with the consequences of unemployment, which is turning from cyclical to structural, thereby sapping potential growth, hitting confidence, and undermining public finances." Unquote. These certainly are problems we would rather not be facing, but problems they are indeed. The Europe 2020 strategy was meant to represent a greater commitment by EU member states to pave the way for a successful strategy in the context of this crisis. It is the European Union's growth strategy, a plan for the European Union to become a smart, sustainable, and inclusive economy, having high levels of employment, productivity, and social cohesion. To boost growth and employment, five headline targets to breach by 2020 were identified in the fields of employment, innovation, education, social inclusion, and climate and energy. These have been the subjects of five different seminars that, that have been held since June as part of this information measure that the Malta EU Steering and Action Committee, MUSEC, is implementing as part of a management partnership agreement with the European Commission. In fact, as a result of this agreement, MUSEC implements as an intermediary body a number of operations that are jointly agreed to by the government, the European Com Commission and the European Parliament. And I would underline that all these operations are funded by the European Commission DG Communication. During each of the seminars held as part of the Europe 2020 project, a number of workshops were organized that afforded stakeholders with the possibility to hear about how the EU-wide objectives are being addressed on the EU level as well as in Malta. Unlike its predecessor, the Lisbon Strategy, Europe 2010-20 is about concrete actions at EU and national levels. 
During the seminars and the workshops held within these seminars, stakeholders also had the possibility to express their views about action that is being taken, particularly in the local context. Many of you have participated in one or more of these seminars and workshops. You have also available in your folders leaflets, the five leaflets that summarize the proceedings of each seminar and provide concrete suggestions for EU citizens to actively contribute towards the realization of the Europe 2020 targets. How is Malta faring in the European context? Limiting myself to basic economic indicators. In the first semester of this year, our GDP increased by 2.6% in real terms. Economic growth in 2012 is expected to be approximately 2.3%, whereas inflation is expected to reach 2.1%. It stood at 2.7% during the 12 months up to last September. In the first months of this year, Malta was one of the five countries of the euro area to register an increase in employment, 2.5%, compared to the euro area average of approximately 1%. The number of unemployed persons stood at 5,894 in September, which marks a decrease of, one point, of uh, 104, of whom 18% were aged between 16 and 24, 53.3% aged between 25 and 49, and 28.7% over 49. Women accounted for 21.6% of total unemployed, an increase of 1.2% in uh, one year period of one year. If we look at statistics published only a few hours ago by Eurostat, we see that Malta's unemployment stands at 6.7% in October 2010, which is a decrease of 0.1% over the last month and a decrease of 0.3% uh, over the past year. Looking at the euro area, the unemployment in in October 2010 stood at 10.3%, whereas for the EU27 at 9.8%. Therefore, um, when one considers that the lowest unemployment is Austria with 4.1% and Malta having 6.7%, I do believe that the figures do at least give us reason to be cautiously optimistic as regards uh, the local situation. As we heard in the recent budget speech, government's priorities for 2012 remain concentrated on addressing Malta's economic, social and environmental challenges. Firstly, sustainable finances with a reduction in the fiscal deficit and public debt and the strengthening of fiscal governance. Pension reform to ensure sustainability. A sound educational system geared towards serving the needs of the economy, especially tertiary and vocational education and the reduction in the rate of student dropout for 16-year-olds and above. Improving competitiveness in the Maltese economy and finally investment in clean energy and the promotion of more efficient energy use. With OECD predicting that the euro area as well as the United Kingdom are entering a mild recession, is there any cause for optimism? As European Commission President José Manuel Barroso stated in his speech to the European Parliament on October 12th of this year, the European Union needs to break the vicious circle of uncertainty over, certain, over sovereign debt sustainability and over growth prospects. As EU leaders declared following the meeting of the European Council on October 23rd, it is the, European, it is the Europe 2020 strategy that continues to guide the Union and the Member States in promoting the delivery of growth enhancing structural reforms. Thus, the Europe 2020 strategy together with the European semester, the Europe plus PAC, and the package of six legislative acts on economic governance provide the Union with a framework to enhance its economic governance and to ensure that the required measures are taken to pull Europe out of this crisis. Before concluding, may I express a final word of thanks, first of all, to the speakers who flew to Malta, particularly, specifically for this occasion. To all of you for having participated, to our suppliers, Lighthouse and Ashley, as well as to music staff who have coordinated this project from its inception to this national conference today. Thank you very much.